Welcome to the video. My name is Alexi and on this channel I cover all things Azure. And today I'm very excited since we're going to start a very exciting new topic on this channel. And that topic is going to be Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft Fabric is this all-in-one analytic solution for enterprises. And this beast is packed with features. And today we're only going to scratch the surface and only cover the data factory in Microsoft Fabric. And the point of this video is to highlight what are the key differences between the data factory in Microsoft Fabric compared to the OG data factory in Azure. And now, without further ado, let's fire up the Fabric and data factory and let's highlight the key differences between these two tools. Let's start our comparison from the OG Azure Data Factory. Many people that have been using Azure Data Factory should be very familiar with this view. This is the pipeline development view. And here we can see that I have two pipelines open. And these pipelines can be seen here in the top bar. Then here we have this middle sidebar where we have all the activities that can be used in our Azure Data Factory pipelines. Now let's open up the fabric and let's see how the Data Factory looks there. Now I have the fabric open here. This is the Data Factory development view in the Microsoft Fabric. If you are familiar with Power BI, I think you can find many familiar elements here. I have also two pipelines open here in Fabric. First thing that I want to highlight is that we don't have this kind of a top bar that we have in the Azure Data Factory. Instead, we can see in this sidebar that we have two pipelines open. So this is a bit different in the Fabric already. From this home page, we can also create a new pipeline. So let's do that. Let's add a name to our pipeline. After naming our pipeline, Fabric opens up this pipeline development view. This is a bit different compared to Data Factory. Instead of a blank canvas, we have this start build our pipeline selection in the middle from which we can click the task that we want to perform. Let's start by adding just a wait activity to this pipeline by selecting it from the pipeline activity list. After this, we can see a bit similar canvas to the Azure Data Factory where the actual pipeline development happens. Here I first want to show where we can find the activities. In this top bar we have this tab called activities and under this we can find all the activities that are currently available in Fabric. Now the activities are in the top bar compared to the pipelines that used to be there and the pipelines are now in the sidebar where the activities used to be. So they have kind of switched places. In this pipeline development view we have also parameters, variables and settings and those are pretty identical to data factories corresponding tabs. Now let's open up our copy data activity and let's see what has changed. Let's first look at the source. After opening up the source tab, we can see that we have this thing called connection. And this connection is basically same as the linked service is in the Azure Data Factory. And we can click new to open up the connection selection tab that would be the same as linked service selection tab in the Azure Data Factory. Many people probably see that not all the linked services have been supported here as connections in the Fabrics Data Factory but I imagine that Microsoft is going to implement those in near future. Let's try to create Azure Blob Storage connection and let's see what happens. When creating a new connection to Azure Blob Storage, we can see that this connection view is a little bit simpler compared to the Data Factory's linked service configuration. And also the authentication methods are not that good compared to the Azure Data Factory. Let's disregard this connection since I have already created one connection to a Blob Storage. After selecting our connection to the Blob Storage, we can see that we get the dataset options directly to this copy data source page. Because in the Microsoft Fabric, we do not have the concept of dataset like we do in the Data Factory. So all the dataset configurations are made to this activity and they are not in the separate object when comparing to the Data Factory where we have these separate objects called datasets where we configure things but things work a bit differently here in the Fabric Data Factory. Another thing to note is that in the Azure Data Factory, we always have a source and then we have a sync when using copy data activity. But in the Fabrics Data Factory, the sync is actually called a destination. I think Microsoft has done this to harmonize things between these different tools that they have brought to the Microsoft Fabric. 
in the OG data factory we have data flows and then we have power queries that can be used to transform the data. Both of these are very powerful transforming tools that can be used in your ETL processes to transform the data to the format of your liking. However, in the Microsoft Fabric we only have one data flow called data flow gen 2. This data flow gen 2 in the Fabric has this kind of a power query based editor and this would allow you to do very powerful and scalable data transformations to your data using this Fabric's data factory. But this is a feature that we're not going to cover very in depth in this video and we will be covering it in the upcoming videos. Let's next talk about triggers. In the Azure Data Factory we can create a different types of triggers to our pipelines. We have schedule trigger, tumbling window trigger and then we have some event based triggers as well. However, in the Microsoft Fabric Data Factory we only have schedule triggered currently available. But don't worry, since Microsoft already has on their backlog that they're going to implement these other types of triggers to the Microsoft Fabric as well. If you are an experienced data factory user, you have to be comfortable using dynamic expressions as part of your pipelines. And here we can see how the dynamic expression builder looks in the data factory. And we have a bunch of different functions from which we can choose the right ones to use in our pipeline logic. The great thing in the Fabrics data factory is that the dynamic content and those functions are pretty much the same as in the data factory. So if you are very comfortable using those in the data factory, you should be very comfortable using them in the Fabrics data factory as well. Experienced data factory users know that there are these things called integration runtimes in the data factory. Experienced data factory users already know that we have many different integration runtimes that provide the computing environment for our data factory activities. This is a very core concept in the Azure Data Factory and we have different integration runtimes for different purposes, like connecting to the on-premise systems. However, in the Microsoft Fabric we don't have the concept of integration runtimes. And Fabric is going to have this thing called on-premises data gateway that is still in the design phase that is going to do the same thing as this kind of on-premise integration runtime in Azure Data Factory. People that have been using Azure Data Factory in professional environments are aware that there are monitoring features for your pipelines. These allow you to monitor your pipeline runs and see what pipelines failed and succeed and what are still running. It's a very handy feature to see what is happening in your data factory. We have the similar functionality in the Microsoft Fabric as well, and we can open up the monitoring hub, what is the basically the place to monitor your pipeline runs. But the cool thing in this monitor hub is that we can see pipeline runs that are happening in the other workspaces as well. Basically, this would allow us to see all the pipeline runs that are happening into all the workspaces that we have access to. And this is a pretty cool feature, since in some environments you could have multiple Azure data factories and then you would have the monitoring tied to the specific data factory and you couldn't monitor them all at once very conveniently. But in Fabric this is a built-in feature and very convenient one. And that is all that I wanted to cover today. I hope you now have an understanding how Microsoft Fabric's data factory compares to the OG data factory in Azure. Also, it is very important to note when I'm filming this video, Microsoft Fabric is only six months old. And not all the features found in Azure Data Factory have been implemented to the Fabric's data factory yet. My personal estimate is that the Microsoft Fabric will be enterprise ready in 6 to 12 months, because in that time range, Microsoft has had enough time to implement all the necessary features so that the Microsoft Fabric can fulfill its promises to be this all-around analytics platform for enterprises. If you found this video interesting, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more Azure and Fabric content. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.